Thank you, Catherine. So prior to starting my lightning talk, I would actually like to respectfully acknowledge that at SFU, we live and work on the unceded territories of the Coast Salish peoples. So I also want to acknowledge I stand before you with a completely scripted speech because I'm really nervous and I can make it through a two hour lecture without looking at my notes. Dr. Fabian actually did a peer evaluation of my class and she's like, you didn't even look at your notes once. You weren't even over at the computer. How did you do it? And so I have my speech here um, because I am nervous. And since I'm being honest, I'll share the giving a talk in front of my peers isn't the only time I get nervous in my role. I actually start every semester nervous for the first week of class, nervous to meet my new students. And it often comes up when I'm giving my presentation in week one, um, particularly around the presentations and participation components in the class, where I say to students, you know, I was an 18 year old, 19 year old, 26 year old, 36 year old who still gets nervous when it comes to presenting in front of my peers, but I get over it. And something I always keep in mind, it's something my junior high basketball coach in Salmon Arm, um, <laughs> just to answer that question, uh, <laughs> told, uh, told me before a big basketball game is that being nervous isn't a bad thing, it's actually a sign that you care. So that's kind of what I carry with me when I'm really nervous um, in different moments. So acknowledging that I'm nervous often puts me at ease. It's not right now, but I'm hoping I'll get there. <laughs> I just can put that out there. I thought I'd feel better about it. Um, but it does allow me to be my authentic self in the classroom for the remainder of the first class and beyond throughout the semester. So in sharing that with you all today, I've presented my authentic self to start my 10 minute lightning talk, uh, which is a theme I'll revisit in the next nine minutes or so. For me, being authentic in the classroom means I'm open to students seeing who I am as a person that exists in the world, including outside of academia. So another example I'll share of being authentic is what happens in my first lecture. At the start of week one, I share the basics. So this is my name, this is my email address. Um, I went to SFU as an undergrad, did my master's at Cambridge, came back as a PhD student at SFU. I was a professor for, um, in the States for a couple of years, and then I came back as a lecturer at SFU. But the next slide, I actually deviate um, from that professional identity and I share photos that kind of capture who I am outside my classroom. And since the fall of 2018, the photo collage has evolved to include photos of my dogs and some distant images of my husband and two-year-old child playing at the beach. I'm open in sharing with my students how much joy they bring me and some of the activities we do in our spare time. So you're probably wondering how this connects to my classes. So it connects because on the next few slides, I actually talk about my policies, about students asking me quick questions. We know those don't exist after class. Um, right after lecture and then my response times to emails. As I explain both, I say to students, I don't answer questions at 420 when class ends or at 520 when class ends because I actually want to make it home to that cute little kid that you saw in the photo before. And I say that, you know, I have about an hour commute and it's really important for me to make it home and read her some bedtime stories. So I say that, and I also add that I might be slower on weekends to respond to emails, so I might take longer than my 12 to 24 hour response time because we're busy making memories. I remind my students at that point in time that work-life balance is fundamental to our well-being, happiness, and success, and that they too should try as best as possible to carve out space for their own well-being. It's important to note here as well that I always provide my students with the resources SFU has developed both in the Canvas um, site as well as the syllabus, so that they know that we care and understand that university can be hard. So in continuing to be honest with you today, I'll admit that I was terrified about establishing boundaries regarding quick questions, afraid that my evaluations in fall 2018 would say that I had unreasonable policies regarding students not being able to ask questions after class. And the thing is, not a single student commented on that. But what they did say was that I took the time to comment, um, sorry, they took the time to comment on my caring approach and availability to meet with them, including outside of my scheduled office hours. I always consider that if they can meet with me, um, meet me halfway in terms of accommodating my family's needs, I can meet their needs and meeting with them at a time that works around their course and work schedules. So that's another way that I show my authentic self in the classroom, and I do so in a way that shows that I care about my students and their well-being. And thinking about the ethic of care in the classroom, I think about the fact I wouldn't be standing in front of you all today receiving this Cormac Award, and one that I'm really honored to receive, first and foremost because my parents and my siblings, because they always supported me, and they've been truly phenomenal role models in showing me what it means to work hard and hustle every single day. 
But as Catherine noted, I'm a first generation university student. And so it's without my university instructors who piqued my curiosity about correctional policies and practices, supported me as I navigated difficult methods classes, and who took the time to entertain my questions during class and during their office hours, I wouldn't have made my way back to SFU after um, doing my PhD and going afar and coming back. So standing here before you, I'm in so many ways a product of their support, direction, and influence, and I'm lucky enough to call some of them colleagues today. Margaret. Mm. I care for my students because I know firsthand how impactful it is to have a university instructor care about you and your future. I will also say that beyond these instructors teaching me content related information, they also modeled exemplary teaching practices and the value in po uh, fostering a positive, safe, engaging, interesting and critical classroom dynamic. Perhaps then it's unsurprising that one of the themes that emerges from my course evaluations is that students appreciate that I give them opportunities to engage with the content, with their classmates, and with me. That I encourage their being respectful of perspectives that might challenge their own. That I remind them that I value what they have to say, what their, their diverse experiences bring to our classroom. I believe that true learning takes place when we create a space where people feel safe thinking outside of the box and contributing to a broader discussion. So that's where my approach in the classroom comes from. It comes from recognizing the role my mentors have played in my life. It's in my heart to care for my students because of all that I've received from my own instructors here at SFU. Another piece of the puzzle is that I truly love teaching. I always say I get to stay in university for life. And as my guest speakers always say, it's the best place to be. It's going to keep you young at heart. And that's part of it, you know, being around young people who have so many bright ideas and so much curiosity about the world they're learning about. As instructors, we have the opportunity to foster, or at least create an interest in, a certain subject and teach them how to think more critically about important topics at the broader social level. I love being an instructor and being in the classroom, engaging with my students and learning from, what they, learning from them while they learn from me. I'll share a fairly recent example of how my students motivate me to learn. While some instructors might view not knowing the answer as an embarrassment, I view these questions as teachable moments. The short version is that I had a student ask about the election process for prisoners, specifically whether uh, prisoners had the right to vote in provincial and territorial elections. I confidently said yes, but the student thought they learned differently in a different class. So I said, you know what, let's do some research. I'll figure this out this week, I'll find out more information because I was confident in my response, but I didn't like I couldn't tell them the process of which they can actually vote. So I ended up consulting various election acts. I even called some different election offices up north and in BC to learn more so that I could provide a more detailed explanation in class the next week. As I explained the expanded information about the process, I used the opportunity to demonstrate to my students that while I'm their instructor, I'm an active learner, learning from their interests and their insights. I remind my students that we all have something to offer each other. The notion that we are simultaneously teachers and learners with lessons to share with one another was most apparent recently in a transformative experience I had in facilitating a student prisoner book club at a local correctional facility. Due to time constraints, I can't tell you how that came to be, but I will tell you what it was about. For four weeks, I took five SFU students into a local prison and we met with the same four prisoners and sometimes it was up to six. Um, it's really hard when they're getting out um, to have the same people every time. But we had four that were there every week. We talked about Jordan Tutu's um, All the Way My Life on Ice. And I found that each week it was more powerful than the last. We talked about struggles ranging from suicide to substance abuse to challenging upbringings and how the author and the prisoners overcame those challenges. At the end of the process, I asked all of the students, can you recommend anything for me to make this better? Because I want to do it again. And they had some fantastic suggestions. I also asked my SFU students if they were willing to write two to three sentences so that I could pitch the idea to the school, or FAS, for extra funding. <laughs> <laughs> Their responses were really meaningful, so I want to share two, as these examples highlight that we all have something to contribute to each other's growth. So one student talked about the they valued the opportunity to hopefully have created some meaningful impact in their lives by offering them a space where they could explore personal connections to those who have similar life experiences and learn from their successes. A second, a second student who I know was going through a really difficult time in their personal life talked about how the author and some of those prisoners were actually experiencing similar circumstances and they shared how they were able to or what they should have done to overcome the difficult points in their life and this student talked about how their interactions not only gave them insight on how to move forward but their stories also encouraged my student to not give up hope so that was really um, impactful 
So I share these two quotes to illustrate how we are all simultaneously teachers and learners with lessons to share with one another. But I also share my experience with the book club to demonstrate how for me personally as an instructor, my ethic of care actually extends beyond the classroom to facilitate my students' growth as individuals, engaging with members of our community. As part of my Disrupting Colonialism Through Teaching seminar series, I read an article written by Jeanette Armstrong right around the time I wrapped up the book club. And the author speaks about how single drops of knowledge seep into our minds. And I couldn't help but think about the article in relation to my recent experiences, about where those drops come from in my teaching world. From my students' contributions in class, to my fellow classmates during the seminar series, to informal and formal dialogue with my colleagues, and to the prisoners' contributions in the book club. So I'd like to wrap up on that note, with that image fresh in our minds of how single drops of knowledge um, seep into our minds, include, including those that will be shared today throughout the Cormac Symposium, how they'll seep into our minds and inform our teaching practice moving forward. Thank you. Thank you.